Uno, dos, one, two, tres, cuatro. Good morning, everybody. Holy moly. This is our 51st show. We are almost at a year. Thank you for listening. This is Francisco Servent. I am the attorney and problem solver at law here on your Sunday morning. You're going to get an hour with me, and you're not going to get a bill. This is uh, this is the Rethink Your Legacy show, where I just get to ramble on about whatever I want, and you have to listen. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, and hopefully, if you've listened to the show before, you found it valuable. I am, like I said, I'm an attorney here in in Chandler, Arizona, at Keystone Law Firm, where we focus exclusively on helping people plan their estate, protect their assets, avoid taxes, do all that great fun stuff. Um, and I'm just here to try to share what I've learned, what I've experienced over the years, the problems that I've seen people run into, the mistakes I see get made, even by other law firms out there, so that you guys don't run into these problems. That's my whole goal here. Um, but all of that kind of ties to something bigger. And I think today I want to switch into that bigger concept a little bit. It ties in, I mean, all of that is great, right? You know, making more money with your investments, saving money on taxes, avoiding, um, you know, lawsuits and protecting your money from bankruptcy. I mean, just literally like, I love all that asset protection stuff because this is, these are, you know, like the American dream is to build your own wealth and, and my job is to protect it. So I love doing that, but that all serves something even bigger, right? It's not, it never is. It it never should be, at least for the clients we work with. It's never just about accumulating dollars, accumulating assets. Um, They're here to do something bigger for you. You have a bigger purpose in life and those things are there to serve that purpose. And, uh, you know, I, I, I talk about that a little bit. I want to talk about it today exclusively. And from one really um, personal perspective of mine, because of just I don't know, I, w- I was raised in a in a really pretty close knit family. I mean, I'm, I wasn't perfect by any means, but we um, we're a really close family, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, but I am one of four kids, and I'm the only boy. So I was raised in a family with a lot of women: uh, my three sisters, my mom, and it was just me and my dad. Um, and so I, I, I don't know, I was kind of raised just with a really healthy appreciation for, um, the, the, you know, respecting my sisters and my mom. My dad did a really good job of, I think, giving me a very good, healthy dose of respect for that. And, um, and so, you know, I've been married, my wife and I are coming up on 20 years, holy cow. And we have four kids of our own. And my wife does tease me because, you know, in fun, but I, I think being raised with three sisters helps me be a better husband. I just have a little bit more understanding than I see, um, around some of my other friends. Um, and so what, where I'm going, where I'm going with all of this is that, I think I want to give a bigger gift to the women in our lives and some bigger credit to you. I know I did that just a couple weeks ago with Mother's Day. You know, Father's Day is coming up and I'll spoil you dads here in just, you know, short order. But I don't know. There's just something about you gals out there that uh, you guys are just, you guys can kick some major butt and... I think us guys, we don't acknowledge that enough. So anyway, today my focus is really on you women and um, some things that I hope you get, um, that you don't dismiss, that you don't completely delegate away, that you accept the authority you have over your own life in this area. I, I know that you know, I look at my mom, I look at my mom's mom, my grandma, I look at my dad's mom, my abuelita, right? I I look at these women who they, 
did things in their life for very specific reasons, almost always, almost always, it was guided by the fundamental principle of taking care of their family. And I know you guys do the same. Trust me, I'm one of the guys. But I look at how my mom did it, my grandma did it, my abuelita did it, and how my sisters are doing it right now, how my wife is has done it since we've been married and since we've had kids. And there's just, I mean, you know, there's that whole mom guilt thing. There's just a real, it's just a reality that there's just something different about the way, the energy they bring to that. And I want, I don't want it to be missed. I don't want you ladies to miss the fact that you have some incredible influence and power over these, uh, these decisions around your finances, your assets, your wealth, your, um, you know, insurance, just all these really boring things that for the most, I can't say for the most part, but are traditionally, in my experience, dealing with thousands of families, a lot of times they get relegated to the guy, to the husband. And, you know, I, I guess that's okay. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. But come on, gals, we got to we gotta own the fact that you're more than capable, sometimes more more capable than us. And, you know, there's a, there's a level of comfort that I want you to get from that. So, so that's what we're going to cover today. I'm going to give you some of the fundamental pieces so that you can start that conversation. So you can start that research, you can get the tools for that. And the the thing I'm going to give away is really focused mostly for gals out there who are widowed. Um, you guys just, you know, you guys just break my heart. Like, um, yeah, it just breaks my heart. And, um, and I, and I want to give you this report that we created for today, uh, four step checklist for widows to protect your financial security. Uh, becoming a widow, life is totally different. And so go get that off of our website today. It's at radio.keystonelawfirm.com. And you can just type that in onto a browser on your phone, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. Enter your name and email and the website will send it right to you. It will outline the basic fundamental tools that you're going to need to know about. Um, I, you know, if you're not a widow, uh, God bless you. You, it may be something you have to face at some point in your life. And so you want to be prepared ahead of time, go grab this ahead of time and start to learn these things. This is, this tool is something that can literally change the trajectory of your life. And I mean, it could literally just make things so much more certain for you. So you don't have that, those you know, those thoughts of, oh my gosh, am I going to outlive my money now? Like, do I have enough to, to last? Or are we saving enough, uh, saving enough now so that if something happens later, I'm going to be okay. And you don't need to fear the money question. If you feel that you feel sort of some fear around it, I promise you it's only because you haven't, um, uh, dug into it. You haven't done what you need to do. And this checklist shows you step one, two, three, four, you go through these four steps, boom, you won't have fear about this anymore. So that's what we're going to talk about today. The four step checklist for widows, but really this is for all you gals out there. Uh, so go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com and download it and let's go through it together right? Um, and then if you are in the place of life where you just have, you know, you need something more than a booklet you can read, uh, then call us, let us guide you through it. It doesn't need to be stressful. It doesn't need to be overwhelming. You know, you don't need to be worried about this stuff. You just need somebody who's done it a thousand times to show you A, B, C, D, you know, don't, don't stress out. Uh, Becoming a widow, life is very different. It is, you know, things are not going to feel the same. It's okay for things to change. 
And, and, you know, I'm going to go through a little bit of that too, because there's some stages that you're going to feel yourself going through. So if you need some personal guidance on that, then give us a call. The first appointment is by phone. Get that scheduled. It's free. There's no catch or anything just to kind of figure out where you're at, what's going on in life, what might we help you with, and then show you what the next step is. So call us 480-750-7788. 480-750-7788 and my team will help you. It's Sunday morning. Leave a message. They're not there. They'll call you back first thing Monday and they'll get you going in the right direction. 480-750-7788. And then, uh, so while we're on the break, I recommend go over, download this checklist so we can go through it together. Uh, if you're the kind of person that take note takes notes, you print it out and get some notes uh, going on it. And this will be something you can kind of store as a resource for the future. You can download it at radio.keystonelawfirm.com. All right, we'll be back after the break. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Rethink Your Legacy. This is Francisco Servent from Keystone Law Firm, where we do estate planning, asset protection, financial planning, tax planning. We basically help you get that financial security, that peace of mind, that strategy in place to know your assets are protected, your life is secure, you've got that, like, you've got this. I don't know. Is there a slogan we can come up with that says, you got this? Well, that's what we do. And if you need help with that, give us a call, 480 480- Seven five zero seven seven eight eight. Leave us a message. It's Sunday morning. My team is probably sleeping in bed, so leave us a message with your name and phone number, and my and someone will call you back Monday. Your first appointment with us will be by phone. Easy breezy. Just have a phone appointment. Figure out what's going on. There's no cost, no catch. Just a quick discovery call. Figure out, you know, if we can help, and if we can. Then we'll talk about what the next steps are. 480-750-7788 to get that scheduled. Um, Today, I'm giving everybody a four-step checklist. And it's, it's primarily for what I've seen my female widowed clients go through. And, you know, doing... Doing this kind of work, I have the, I don't know, uh, I have the obligation of sitting down with people after somebody, after a loved one has passed away. And it's tough. Um, Sometimes it's especially tough. Being in, the longer we're in practice, the longer we've been in business, the more often we get these phone calls of someone has passed away. And it's tough. There are some weeks where I, I tell you guys, it's, You know, we get three, four or five phone calls of some of my favorite clients and, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's not an easy thing. Um, but we've walked so many of our clients through that conversation and it, it's a different process for everybody. Um, when I, when, when we, when I meet with some of my female clients who lost their husband, lost their loved one, um, there's, there's just stages, right? And, you know, everybody out there has their different stages of what it is and how many stages you go through in the grieving process. I don't know how many there are. I don't think, I think you can come up with a number and make it fit. Um, I know that first stage is the hardest, I, I, well, at least that's what it, that's what it seems like. I haven't been through it, so I'm only going from what I've seen a lot of others go through it. And that first stage is the most confusing. There seems to be a lot of fear about your future. Um, you know, you maybe didn't have a really excellent handle on the financial situation, the long-term plan. Um, losing a husband can a lot of times mean losing a big chunk of your income, right? You you lost his social security or maybe you got his, but now you're losing yours. You're maybe you're losing a pension. There's a lot of financial changes there, but your expenses aren't really going down that much. So you're kind of, there's just a lot of confusion around it. Um, and I, and that plants the seeds of fear and doubt into your mind. And that's scary. So anyway, we put this guide together 
to just address the questions that come up, you know, well, what happens? Like, am I gonna, I don't even know where all our investments are, you know? Yeah, I know there was a financial advisor we agreed to sign up with one day and, and my husband did all the meetings. I kind of, you know, did decided not to go, or maybe I went once a year or something. I don't really know what all these different things are. And yeah. So anyway, the four steps in here are what I think every woman should know about. Every woman should be solid in these four things. And especially if you're a widow, you can use this just to, you know, um, chunk it down. You know, if you, anything is doable, if you do it in tiny bite sizes. And I think these are the bite sizes of, of, of the sort of baby steps you could take to just know you're moving in the right direction. Um, the first step, this is going to, I hope this, I hope this comes out right. The first step is, is not, it doesn't say get organized. Okay. It says get minimally organized. And this is the, this is the trick that we've used for our clients for over a decade. You see a lot of, um, a lot of financial planners, a lot of estate planning attorneys, the first time you meet with them, or maybe the second time or something, or maybe even before you meet with them, they send you out their questionnaire, you know, fill out this questionnaire. And it's like 10 pages of details of like grinding tons of information that, you know, oh my gosh, I'm never going to fill this thing out. Holy cow, right? It's just like every account number, every policy number, every beneficiary, social security number, every, and you're just like, I'm never going to get around to filling all that out. I, we don't do that. And I don't find that that's helpful. You know, at some point down the road, yeah, that all that detailed information is going to surface. But in the beginning, it's not necessary. Your job, your peace of mind comes from getting minimally organized. And what I mean by that is you're just going to jump in. And if you still have your spouse, you know, yeah, hallelujah, then use this trick to prepare you for, you know, um, a, a tough situation. Get minimally organized. Just do a brain dump. Just sit down and in 10 minutes, spit out everything. And if you don't even want to write it down, just turn on the recorder on your cell phone. Boom. What banks, what companies have insurance, what financial advisors, what stockbrokers, what, you know, where's the real estate? Where's the storage unit? I don't know. Just interview and brain dump it all. That's honestly, that's 80% of the challenge is getting that brain dump out. And so that's the minimally organized first step. If you just get that brain dump out, you know, what we do for our clients is then we organize that into something really easy to understand. Just a nice little table. Poof. You know, there's the financial life right there. And no, it's not perfect. No, it's not. doesn't have all these Monte Carlo analysis and projections and blah, blah, blah. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about one page snapshot, get minimally organized so you know you can put in your hands a quick snapshot of your financial life. That is the first step. That's always been the first step. You know, year, you know, when I first started, I, I was trying to model how other attorneys did this. And it, I literally had like a 30 page checklist. It was ridiculous. 30 page checklist for clients to fill out before they were ever allowed to meet with me. Guess how many people ever met with me? Like, you know, nobody <laughs> ever wanted to meet with me. What a surprise. Um, yeah, we've whittled that way, 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 way down. And now you don't, there's nothing to prepare before you get a meeting. You just have a meeting. And then through the course of getting to know you is how the details come out. Uh, so first thing on the checklist, and again, go get the checklist. Go jump over to radio.keystonelawfirm.com. This is for you. Don't think this isn't. If you're a woman, if you're a widow, if you think you might become a widow someday, this is for you. 
These are the four steps that we give our clients. We walk them through. They've used to organize their financial life. They've used to just literally walk out of our office and go, okay, I I think I see a, a step forward. I think I can see my finances are in order, you know, I know I'm going to be able to pay the bills more than this month. I I see how this is going to work. I can start to see the future here. That's what I want you to have. That's what I want all of you to have. So go get it. Radio.keystonelawfirm.com. If you're one of, if you're a guy out there and you've got a woman in your life, you know, your spouse, your mother, your sister, you, this is it, it. It's built for widows, so don't scare them if they're not a widow by giving it to them. You know, prepare them. Say, hey, we got this. It says it's for widows, but it's for everyone. Um, get it. Give it to them. This is this is what if you're married, guys. This is what you need to do for your wife, right? That's that's the obligation we have is to get them prepared is to not hoard all this information in our own life. Like it's our obligation to make sure that if something happens to us, my wife is going to be taken care of. She's going to be okay. And not from a logical standpoint, right? I I, I get that we can say, look at the spreadsheet, look at the software, just call the financial advisor. No, no, no. It's our job to prepare them from an emotional standpoint. And that's different. And that's where we have to think about it differently. All right. So go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com, enter your name and email, get the checklist. And let, and after the break, we'll pick up and, and start going through the rest of them uh, through number two, three, and four. If you need help with this right now, that's why you. That's why we have a phone number. That's what we do. We're happy to talk. Just call, call and schedule your first appointment, 480 480- 7508840750750788 All right, we'll see you in a minute. Welcome back. Welcome back. Good morning everybody. This is Francisco Servent with Rethink Your Legacy and I'm your local estate planning attorney and you're getting a whole hour from me. And you're not getting a bill. Ha ha. Isn't that wonderful? It's one of the things we can do with the power of the radio show, right? Is I can give you all this information completely free of charge. So use it. Don't, you know, don't just listen, right? Take some action. If you need some help planning your estate, getting your affairs in order, winding up a probate, or somebody is just completely not doing things right with regard to managing mom's affairs, uh, taking care of debt. I don't know. I mean, we get involved with all of these issues, guardianships, conservatorships, then give us a call 480-750-7788. Um, hopefully we can help point you in the right direction of some, uh, of solving that Ugh, Yeah. Some, some, sometimes it gets a little bit ugly, but, uh, but we're here to solve that. Uh, that phone number again, 480-750-7788. And if you haven't gone to get your free checklist, the one we're giving away today, four-step checklist for widows to protect their financial security, then go get it now at radio.keystonelawfirm.com. And you just enter your name and email so the system can send it right to you. There you go. So we covered the first one. The second step on this checklist is, this is a tough one. I I don't even know all the aspects I could possibly talk about here. Um, I know in my marriage, you know, my wife and I, we met when we were uh, first day of seventh grade art class, first day of seventh grade art class, we went to, we both went to post and junior high in Mesa. Um, and they had the, you know, the, those square top, uh, desks that had the little cubby underneath and they had four of them put together. So it was like a little table and four kids. And I was in there first sitting down I'm super nervous. Cause I actually came from a Catholic private elementary school going into a public junior high school is a totally different, you know, culture too, for me. So I'm sitting there all nervous and this really just gorgeous drop dead, beautiful girl walks in 
and you know I completely try to <laughs> not connect eyes like not no no uh, eye contact I'm avoiding it uh, she's walking closer and closer to my desk. I'm like, uh, what's going on here? No, no, this is terrible. And she's getting closer and closer. And finally she sits down at my table and I make no eye contact. I just pretend she doesn't exist because I'm a total nerd. And she, she says, hi, she says, hi, my name's Nicole. And and I'm, I don't really remember the details. I'm sure I said, oh, my name's Francisco. And then completely averted my eyes. Uh, so that's how we met. We had art class together. I'm a pretty good artist. I had a lot of fun in that class. She's She would claim she's a terrible artist, but she actually has uh, a ton of creativity in uh, as a baker She's and, a, and, and cooking food. She's a phenomenal uh, pastry chef. So anyway, we met in seventh grade art class. I, you know, nothing romantically happened in seventh grade, but, you know, the years went by. I went to a different high school. Then I ended up going back to the high school she was at. Um, and I, about senior year, I finally started absolutely just <laughs> chasing her. You know, I'm like, she's the one I gotta, I gotta, you know, gotta get her to say yes. And just doggedly pursued her until right after, right after we graduated high school, she, we got tricked actually, actually that's what happened. We got tricked into going out together. Um, our friends ditched us and left us to no, you know, we couldn't find where they were all hanging out. We we're supposed to hang out as a group. And so I ended up just hanging out with her. Uh, that was our first date. So anyway, it, it is a, there's, there's just, I don't know how to describe unless you've had that kind of a connection with someone. I don't know how to describe the level of trust that I have with my wife and that she has with me you know, yeah, we get in little fights, right? We all have, we all do. It's part, it's, it's just part of being human. You're going to have misunderstandings. And what we always, every single time discover is that it was a misunderstanding. I thought she was saying this and she thought I was saying that literally a misunderstanding. And, you know, being together now for 20 years, married 24, 25 years, you know, dating, um, we have a level of trust in each other that it just, you know, trying to recreate that with someone, I can't imagine how that would ever work. I can't imagine losing that person, you know? And so for our, for when, when I sit down with somebody and they've lost their husband of 50 years of 60 years, or even of 10 years, um, it's, it's this, like your world, the foundation is, is shaken to the core. And so that's why the second thing on our checklist is who can you trust? How do you know? How do you know when you can trust someone? And on, on this second step of this checklist, this is not an easy step. This is not, this is not an easy checklist, right? But it's a, it's the critical checklist. And so, you know, when we're sitting down with someone who, has their, their loved one has just passed away. They're rocked to the core and, you know, they just need to know, can I trust you? And how am I going to figure out if I can trust you? Because so many people are out there. They're going to take advantage of you. They're not going to tell you the whole story. They're going to give you a half truth, get you to sign on with them. And then three months, six months, a year, five years later, you know, it blows up. Um, millions of dollars every year are lost to scams, right? I mean, and then not even just like professional advisors, but how do you know who to trust just when something breaks in the house? You know, I mean, the dishwasher is leaking. Ugh, I got to call someone, you know, go to Google, go search, look at their reviews. Like, what do I do? How do I find just somebody when something breaks in my life, my car broke, you know, broken down needs repair. The AC needs fixed. Ah, rah, 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 rah. Um, these are, this whole trust thing is you're going to have to develop a framework, sort of a, a, a filter that you have, that, that everybody has to go through in order for you to allow them to do business with you. And so what, this check, you know, if you go get this at radio, get this thing, right. You know, 
this thing I'm trying to give you, the download, the report, the checklist. Go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com, download it. I give you that framework, okay? I give you that bullet point. Make sure all of these things are true before you do business with someone. You don't just, you know, trust someone with your money. You don't just trust someone to come into your home and do work for you. You just, you don't just trust. And, you know, the, one of the basic foundational items here, I'm just a fan of asking for referrals. We have a huge referral network at our law firm where we vet and we, Ooh, to get on my approved referral list, you got to prove yourself. I'll test you out. Like, you know, I'll, I'll test it out with something, but you've got to really prove yourself that you've been, you're going to be honorable. You're going to treat people right. You're going to treat them like family. You're going to fix problems if they happen. You know, all of like just a, a, a whole gamut of you've got to prove who you are before we're going to refer somebody to you. And so anyway, the report I'm giving you, if you go to the website and download, it goes through and gives you a checklist of things to make sure you consider so that you have the best chances of not being scammed. And, you know, I just, I have to also say that the fear of being taken advantage of, it exists, okay? But that fear shouldn't tell you what decision to make. It should it should inform your decisions, and we shouldn't ignore that it's there, but you may still have to take a decision, you know, take a step forward. And and, and the checklist that I give you there, it gives you the a, a great chance of success. You know, if somebody does take advantage of you, don't beat yourself up. It was a learning opportunity, and you're going to move on. Okay, that's the that's the the final conclusion of this second step in this checklist. So go get it. Save this for the future. Go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com and you can do it off of your phone. Just type in radio.keystonelawfirm.com right into your browser like Safari or whatever you use or Chrome or Google or something, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. And then you enter your name and your email and then go look at your email account and you should have that in just a few minutes. Um, So you can save this information for later or read it now, obviously. Uh, But if you need help, so we're coming up to a break. So let me just remind you, if you need help, if you've had a loved one die, if you are if you're trying to prepare for the inevitable, if that if that inevitable is coming, then give us a call and don't do this alone. Figure out how somebody can help you make this easier. 480-750-7788. That's the phone number you call and your first appointment is free, no obligation. All right, we'll see you after the break in just a minute. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. This is your last chance to get your free download from Rethink Your Legacy. My name is Francisco Cervant, and the download we're giving you today is the four-step checklist for widows to protect your financial security. Um, If you've been listening, uh, I am an estate planning and asset protection attorney in Chandler out of Keystone Law Firm. And we are, today we're talking about really what I have seen my women, my female clients get just very, very worried about and the things that you can do to fix that, right? It's it's, everything in life has a solution. I'm going through some, uh, some study on a different topic and it's, it's kind of neat. It's sort of kind of some mindset and some metaphysical big picture, you know, stuff. And it's interesting because one of the concepts that they're, te- they're that they suggest is that every single problem has a solution. And if that's true, you know, they propose, then, then the solution itself always exists, no matter what problem comes up. And so, you know what, I think we, I can entertain that thought for today, right? 
If you think about that, then we shouldn't ever worry about anything. And you know, that's what the Bible says, right? Don't worry, don't worry. God's going to take care of you. You know, the the birds of the air don't worry. And uh, yeah, that's so easy to say. Living it out is tough. And this is why I'm focusing on our widow clients today. And for those of you who are widowed, uh, my heart goes out to you. I know, I, I know I've seen so many of my clients go through that. And it's different. It's nothing you can prepare completely for. It's nothing you can be prepared for. There's nothing that can make it better. I totally get that. And for those of you guys out there who are married and, you know, you're uh, the the Social Security statistics, uh, they all say we're going to go first. Um, and we're going to leave our wives behind. I pray to God every day that that doesn't happen in my marriage, Um, that, you know, I don't want to leave my wife behind. But if it does, it's my job to do everything in my power to make sure that she's taken care of. And so that's what today is about. So we covered the first two topics, the first two steps on this checklist. Uh, We're going to cover three and four real quick. It is... It's all about, are you going to outlive your money? And this is, although, although I think maybe sometimes this feels like what should be the first step, the other two that I put before this, I think are the right things to think about first before you get to steps three and four. So I put get organized first. I put who do you, how do you know who to trust second? And then third is, am I going to outlive my money? I think that's appropriate because are are you going to outlive your money is a tough question to answer, right? I mean, it's, it's, how do we answer that? My, my abuelita, my dad's mom, she didn't outlive her money. She lost it all to somebody who made a bad investment. My, when her husband, my grandfather died, um, she had six little kids at home. She had six little kids. Ugh. He, he was a pretty successful businessman. So he had, um, he had built up some wealth to leave her, but when he died, it didn't come with an instruction manual. It didn't come with an advisor. It didn't come with, you know, here's how we do things they didn't come with any of that. And so she had this chunk of money, had no clue whatsoever to do with it. And, you know, somebody said, here, I'll, I'll take care of you and make the investments. And it was all gone, you know, uh, nothing. And so she ended up having to work crazy jobs. And my old, my dad's oldest brother dropped out of school, I don't know, 12 or 13 to start working to support the family. And they all did, you know, they all took odd jobs and brought their money home and, you know, put it in the family pot to pay the bills and make sure everybody was fed. They, um, they really struggled because they, they didn't do things in order, right? They first went to, let me just give the money to somebody. And I just don't think that's the right first step. I think the right first step is, get organized, kind of know what the baseline is, know what the information is. Second is learn how to figure out who you're going to trust. Then you can start to think about, am I going to outlive my money? Um, you don't want to outlive your money, right? I know none of you do. And so the whole game here is figuring out what the math is. And I, I know you all hate math, but that's why, you know, either you need to learn to love it you really do. You need to learn to love it. My wife hated and never and refused to participate in the, our monthly budget for probably the first uh, 15, 16 years of our marriage. I mean, I did it every month, paid the bills, managed the budget, did the taxes, like I did all of it. And she just wanted nothing to do with it. She just said, how much can I spend? And um, we were pretty broke, so it wasn't very much <laughs> for her to have to figure out. Um, but then over the last few years, she, I don't, like something just flipped in her. And she said, this is ridiculous. I i want to be in more, I want to be in charge of this thing. And so she started to take it over. And now she literally manages 100% of our, of our personal family budget. And she does a way better job than I ever did. 
Um, she is like on budget every month. You know, it's a mate. It's, it's fantastic. And you, she has learned to love that math because that math gives her freedom, right? It gives her complete freedom to control and say, you know, how our family is going to do things. And so, yeah, in this step three, you're either going to learn how to do the math or you're going to just ask somebody for help. You might have somebody in your life. But what it is, is the outlive your money question. It really just revolves around three things. What regular source of income do you have coming in? Minus your regular expenses. And that's going to tell you what your um, surplus or deficit is. That's Those are the three things you need to know. And then once you know that, If you have a surplus, great. That's the amount you're going to be putting into savings. If you have a deficit, fine. That's what you're going to be pulling from savings. And then it's just a long-term calculation of running that out over the next, you know, 10, 20, 30 years and seeing what the numbers show. There's really nice software calculators online that you can use to figure that out and it'll do all the math for you. And I recommend you you take advantage of those things. That's what we do for our clients is run all that stuff out. We take into account your tax situation, your investment strategy, your insurance, just everything, because then it gets more complicated to do the math. And that's what the good software does for us. Um, So anyway, that's that's the calculation. And then the fourth step is figuring in the most expensive part of your life, which is going to be your medical care and your health care costs. So that's the final step is figuring it is your medical care and health care costs. So guys, that's, that's it. Go get the checklist. I want this in your hands for your wife. I want it in your hands for yourself. I want it in your hands for your mom, for your sister. This is for anybody out there that is a widow, that may become a widow one day, that knows somebody who is or may become a widow. I just, there's no reason to not get this and put it into your hands. So go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com and download it. Put your name, your email, and save it and forward it and share it. Um, this is for you. And if you need help planning this, that's what we're here for. Figure out what your first step is. Uh, our first appointment is scheduled on the phone. There's no cost. It's just a quick discovery call. Figure out, okay, what's going on in life? And if there's something that we can offer to help, either coming into our office and meeting or some other resource we can point you towards, great. We'd be happy to do it. Call to schedule that. Leave us a message. The phone number is 480-750-7788, 480-750-7788. You can also text us at that number if you just want to leave us a message, and my team will call you back to schedule. All right, that is all we got for today, everybody. Next week, we're coming up on our one-year anniversary, our 52nd show, so I hope you guys tune in next week. See you then.